Thank you as well, Sir Erwan. At least we're able to know the evolution of principles of Mr. Ferdinand. And now, for the next discussion, allow me to call Ma'am. Next, we want to discuss is a teacher who believes in the philosophy. You live every day and die only once. For those living days, learn to take risk, learn to explore and discover things. A fulfilling life is the life without what ifs. This teacher also loved to watch movies, to read novels, and to drink coffee. She is a teacher from Anihan Technical School and a part-time educator in Grand Rose Montessori Center. This morning, she will be discussing the fundamental concepts of Ferdinand's theory and post-Cesarean. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Ma'am Laura Lee Canapen. I am Laura Lee F. Canapen. I will be discussing about this um, discussion of fundamental concepts of Sasha's linguistic theory and their post-Sasharian evolution. Okay. So as mentioned, so Ferdinand um, de Sacher is not the first proponent of concepts and theories for um, linguistics, but he has influenced a lot of linguists and scholars with his linguistic theory. Okay. So let's continue. So before everything else, so since this um, the discussion of fundamental concepts, okay, so let me re-echo or, or review the distinctions of language because um, Sashir has started um, a lot, okay, with these distinctions, okay. So descriptive versus prescriptive, synchronic versus diachronic, lang versus parole, competence versus performance, and syntagmatic versus paradigmatic. So, let's start with the descriptive versus prescriptive. So, according to Sacher, descriptive tells what is language, tells how language is actually spoken, and describes the rules or principles. Prescriptive, on the other hand, tells what is correct, tells what should be in the language, and the use of rules in grammar. So, in addition, um, some linguists and experts who believed or who followed um, the, Caesarea, the Caesarean theory, they believe that linguistics should be descriptive more than or rather than um, prescriptive because language or, the ling or linguistics studies the language of across time and the language changes right across time and so sure also suggests that descriptive linguistics is concerned or as equal as to synchronic distinction okay so his theory evolved from um, descriptive approach to a synchronic analysis of language okay so now let's go to synchronic versus diachronic so synchronic is the study of language through specific points in time while diachronic is the evolution of language historical linguistic of language or the historical study of language okay so according to to Sasha, synchronic is a study of the language of a particular or at a particular point in time so just like if you are going to study or specifically study about the early modern English or the present modern English, okay? So well diachronic still according to Sir, okay, is the historical or evolutionary study of language. So which is dependent on social activity, okay, and the changes. You are going to study the evolution of language starting with the um, Old English, of course, and then Middle English, and then Early Modern English, and then to the Late Modern English, and of course, to the Present Modern English. So that is diachronic. Now let's continue with Lang and Parole. Okay, so Lang is defined as the abstract 
linguistic system shared by all members of a speech community and sets conventions and rules while parole concrete use of language or actual use of language by an individual so it uses conventions and the applications of the rules so um, lang and parole are the very iconic dichotomy by Saussure. okay so his work started from these two distinctions and later on i will um, further discuss about these two okay so now let's continue with competence versus perform. So um, in Sacher's work, so these two dis distinctions are not really or precisely described. So we have the help of Noam Chomsky okay, between competence versus performance. So Noam Chomsky had um, separated these two concepts. So, con um, competence is underlying knowledge about language system and rules, while performance is the actual use of language system and rules in concrete situations. So, if you're going to analyze the explanation of Sacher when it comes to performance, performance is per se the performance, performance itself, okay, the use of language, okay, it is somehow connected to parole performance and uh, next is we have syntagmatic versus paradigmatic so syntagmatic is defined as the horizontal arrangement of things and the relationship between units belonging to the same sentence okay while paradigmatic is the vertical a vertical arrangement of things relationship between units belonging to the same category so so for syntagmatic, it is horizontal, and then an another thing is belonging to the same sentence. For paradigmatic, it is vertical and belonging to the same category. So according to, th to Sacher, okay, C. Sosio, he explained that these two concepts, one is concerning with uh, uh, positioning which is syntagmatic and then the other one is concerned with substitution which is um, paradigmatic okay so now that we are done with the, the review of the distinctions of how Sacher um, defined these distinctions okay the basic concepts now let's have here I have some passages or quotations or evidences okay um, just to give evidences regarding um, such as structural linguistic theory, okay? So here are some notable passages from linguists and scholars that support his work. So um, please allow me to read. And such so made a clear statement that, um, okay, so let me, okay. So the such so made a clear statement that language, um, is a system and speech is an individual act of selection and actualization so this is um, according to alan alan h garner 1933 to ferdinand de Saussure belongs the merit of having attention to the distinction between speech and language a distinction so far reaching in its consequences that in my opinion it can hardly fail sooner or later to become the, the indispensable basis of all scientific treatment of grammar. Okay, so let me continue with. Okay, this is according to Sol Saporta, 1961. Common to all modern linguistic theory is the view that a distinction must be made between language in its abstract aspect and language in its physical aspect. Some such dichotomy is implied in such pairs of terms as code and message, lang, parole, language, speech, system, process, and meta-language and the object language. So the abstract aspect is a system of habits describing terms of a set of signs and rules. So signs and rules will be later on discussed, okay? The physical aspect consists of some finite corpus of utterance actually produced by one or more informants over a given period of time. And then the last passage or the last evidence that I have, this is from Wills and Marshall, 1966. So we take it that this is classic distinction between lang and parole is necessary if any sense is to be made 
of an area as complex as language function. So I have said um, earlier that most of the work of, or the actualization, not actualization, sorry. So the, the concept, okay, of this uh, is um, work um, started with the concepts of lang and parole, okay? And I will be discussing more of this, okay? So now let's continue. All right, so post Assyrian um, developments of lang, parole, and lang, language. Okay, so language is an archaic language for French. So this is not uh, already used in dictionaries, it's an old French word. Okay, that means language. Okay, clear indications that Assyrian principles were influences from other linguistics of his time. So again, he is not the first proponent of the theories. Okay, he just inspired the other as well. He was inspired by the first proponents and he also inspired the other proponents of linguistics. Okay, so shares in reformulation of this distinction, the lang and parole contrast would never have received the status in general linguistic theory. So, in his book, um, course, okay, so sure. Um, comprehensively describe the differences between lang and parole okay so let's continue so according to him lang is what has been acquired by the individual and has been stored in the mind so it's abstract right so parole is the more social sphere since speech is the active and the socially relevant aspect of language and language or language is a faculty the basic human speech okay so now we have here some uh, or two two um contrasting diagrams so the first diagram is made by Godel, and the other one is conceptualized by coroner so if you look closely okay so first diagram by Godel suggests that parole is the center of the attention okay so the parole is the center of the attention of language so Godel clearly uh, gives a different understanding about Sacher's point when it comes to language while um, the second diagram okay now here coroner um, suggests a different presentation okay of Sacher's idea so here the focus of attention is language itself so as we see in the second diagram parole only comes after or secondary to lang because lang is one of the properties of parole okay and with these misconceptions or problems or contradictions so sure um came up with a later diagram so here let me show you so according to Sir so this is the the diagram conceptualized by Sir himself because all <laughs> to solve the problems and misconceptions okay about his idea. So as you can see here lang language is equal to lang plus parole meaning without one language is nothing. Language is not complete. Okay? Lang is passive okay because it's in our mind. Okay, and parole is active because it's the application. Lang cons um, constitutes the code and parole realizes the code. Okay, so he visibly corrected the other opposing and misleading ideas about language, about lang, and about parole. So again, for so sure, without one, without language or without Without lang, sorry, and without parole, language is nothing. Okay, language is not complete. That is why he um, conceptualized lang. Language is equal to lang plus parole. Okay, so I hope you understand um, this presentation. Once again, this is distinction of fundamental concepts of Sacher's linguistic theory and their post-Sacherian um, evolution. Once again, I'm Laurel F. Canape, and thank you for listening.